do love it when the sun's shining it means we get out of the house get on our bikes and we can go out for the day uh, today we're going to go to the local country park where there's um all sorts of stuff for the kids to do but we're on our way first of all to pick up uh, the annabelle and thomas's cousin and uh, my sister-in-law because they've come down to visit and we're going to take them out for the day We are now in the middle of the forest. Uh, I think we're a little bit lost, but I haven't told anyone yet. Uh, we're about to go up a huge hill. I don't know if the kids are up to it, but uh, I think probably coffee stop at the top. Yeah. Yes. Oh, who has? Oh no. Because you found you could just tell you could hear it. Just while we're stopping here for a coffee. Right, well there we go. That is one puncture successfully repaired. I hope um, they've gone on ahead. They're going to, I think, hopefully setting up some lunch, so uh, I can go down and have a sandwich and. Um, feel a bit better I'm starving uh, anyway what I want to talk about later is something I've been watching for a little while um, it seems to be that possibly the new Nissan Leaf isn't the next generation at all uh, maybe it's been talked about like a, a facelift what are you two doing is this your base yeah. is it what's in your base Computer, computer, pink reds. Cool. Are you superheroes? Um, what are your superhero names? Superhero I can't believe it. We've just finished lunch, gone to get back on the bikes, and uh, the puncture's back, so I'm just taking it off again. Um, rather than kind of wasting time, the others have gone on ahead to go to the play park so they can have some fun, and I'm left here to repair this puncture. Uh, but what it might do actually is, uh, ever the eternal optimist obviously, uh, gives me an opportunity to talk to you about uh, the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'll s see you in a couple of minutes. Bye. Well this is going well. The pump that I was using is attached to my bike which Sarah's on and um, she's got the best part of a mile away now. So she's coming back. It's not all bad this waiting. Sun's shining. It's nice and peaceful. and. Uh, they left me the coffee making kit, so um, I'm quite happy. <laughs> Hello. Hello the way back. Um, I have a cup if you want to make some coffee. I've got a cup, I've got coffee, I've got hot water. Right, I've managed to find it. It was um, an old repair, obviously, where the tyre had deflated, probably the glue cracked. And uh, when we reinflated it, it was coming out and I, I didn't spot it. So um, I've got it off with a bit of hot water, the old patch, and uh, found a little hole. So I'm just going to rough it up a bit, clean it up, and um, hopefully we'll be back on the road soon. But um, in the meantime, I can talk to you a bit about this whole um, next generation, that a bit? next generation Nissan Leaf. And it seems to be kind of over the last few weeks, more and more in the press. And it kind of all bases around the fact that within Nissan, uh, and as I say, these are just rumours, so I don't know any more than that, but within Nissan, they're referring to the 2018 LEAF as being a facelift. And they're saying that 2020, there'll be a whole new generation. Right, I'm having all kinds of issues today. The battery, the spare battery, I managed to get off Sarah from my other camera. It's, um, it was flat. I picked up the wrong one. So um, we're now on an iPhone. Hopefully it's all right. Well, I'm just waiting for that patch to dry now, so um, I've got a bit more time to sit and enjoy the sunshine. So first and foremost, let's look at all these renderings we've seen, and we pretty much know what it's going to look like now. And the big hint here is, if you look at the between the A and the C pillars on the side of the car, 
it's pretty much the same as the current leaf. Now the front and back are different, um, but it's on the same chassis as far as I'm aware, and uh, it's just what they're calling a facelift. Now, yes, it's gonna have the likes of Pro Pilot on. Well, that comes from the IDS concept car, which effectively is a three-stage approach to full autonomy. Stage one is Pro Pilot, so here we go. We get the first bit, we get to try it out on the new leaf, um, but there's a lot more to come. So there's our first clue. Now the next part of the jigsaw comes in the form of an announcement from uh, Nissan, Mitsubishi and Renault. Hopefully in the next month or so, they are going to be uh, calling a press conference to um, release to the world their new joined up EV platform. So this is um, a EV platform for cars across the three companies. That means uh, costs will be lower um, and they'll be able to start competing a little bit more competitively with ICE cars. And when you take that announcement and put that together with some forecasts that both Renault and Nissan have been putting out about um, the ranges that they want their cars to be achieving by 2020. Now, bear in mind, these are the Japanese ranges, so um, take it with a pinch of salt, but they're talking about anything between, I think Nissan is 550 kilometers and Renault are talking about 600 kilometers per uh, charge. Realistically, they're probably, if you go on how it relates to the European standards today, we're probably looking at 400 kilometers um, in the region of 250 miles. So that's the thinking behind it. But what's the new generation leaf gonna look like? Well, the simple answer is no idea. Uh, however, there are some very clever people who are always scouring the internet and um, see very subtle changes. Now, the IDS concept car was always a very, very big car. Uh, it was a kind of a, a luxury vehicle with full autonomy that you could relax as if you were in first class on an aeroplane. Um, it's been picked up on the internet that there's some further drawings of it that seem to be a lot smaller and would actually fall in line with the similar dimensions of the leaf at the moment. So there's now a bit of a theory that perhaps uh, this is going to be the, the basis for what it, um, it's designed on. Uh, now I'll pop some pictures on so you can have a look. It's, uh, it's not a million miles away, it's just a much fresher, more modern looking car. And um, if that's kind of where they're going, and to be honest, you can see on the pictures that there are parts of that design that aren't particularly different to where we are at the moment with, with various Nissan cars. So it, it all becomes, or it feels like, it's all a possibility. And it feels to me as if this is probably where we're going. Right, well, I've been talking here for a good few minutes and uh, this tyre seems to be holding now. So um, I'm gonna go and catch them up and uh, we'll see where they are. I think they're in a play park somewhere. <laughs> Well, surprise, surprise, guess what's happened? That is one very flat tire. Right, I've still got about another mile to go till I get home. So what this has done is given me a perfect opportunity just to finish off what I was talking about before. And the kind of, the fallout of all this new technology going into one package for three different manufacturers and what this could mean for EVs as a whole. Now we've been talking for ages about wanting a single charge cable, a single way of charging, a single way of doing everything really. Well, if you've got the likes of uh, Nissan and Renault, who are two pretty big players as far as EVs are concerned, uh, and Mitsubishi tagging onto them, and they're gonna come up with a package, hopefully, that will be exactly the same across all three manufacturers. Personally, what I'd like to see is more use of the Tesla superchargers, or well, Tesla charging infrastructure as a whole. Yeah, as it stands, Elon Musk has said that he's more than happy for other manufacturers to use his chargers. Now, I'm sure there's some financial issues that would need working out, but um, there's a network there already. So it, it seems silly to try and start from scratch. So, you know, for Nissan, uh, Renault and Mitsubishi to jump on that, let's have the same charging socket as Tesla and let's make the investment into their infrastructure and then we can build on it, we can make it bigger, we can make it better. It seems silly to fight it and, and go against it. And I think if you start putting those four manufacturers together, then you know, everybody else will follow suit. You'd be silly not to because you'd, you'd miss out. And then we, we're much closer to that kind of common goal of 
one connector, one method of charging, one method of payment that you know, we as owners really, really want. And I think if we can get that, it makes the whole EV package more desirable. It makes it easier for people because how many people do you think get put off by looking at EVs and then looking about how they're going to charge them and it just being a minefield. Well, that's the end of another good day out. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's vlog, remember to like it and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon. Bye.